Hello everyone, my name is Anand Chigrin. I'm going to walk you through how easy it is to actually build a GraphQL endpoint in StepZen. The core concept in StepZen is that you are actually assembling a graph of graphs. Each subgraph is built out of some backend or some domain using some declarative constructs such as it's a database backend or it's a REST backend, or if you're going to actually federate, then it's a GraphQL backend. And then these uh, subgraphs are then assembled together using a de another declarative construct called materializer that takes the data from one subgraph and connects it with the query or mutation on the other. Now, in order for you to actually build one of these subgraphs, you can either have us build it for them, for you. You just point us to a backend. We'll go and introspect that backend. So if it's a curl or a soap backend, we'll just do a steps and import curl. If it's a database backend, we'll do a steps and import of uh, the, the right database. If it's a GraphQL backend, as I said, for federation, then you can point us to it. Either way, when we look at the backend, we kind of produce some mini, mini graph, some subgraph out of that particular backend. Or you can start from the other end. You can actually have your own view of what your type schema looks like and your query schema looks like. And then you can uh, hydrate them with, with real data by using these kind of REST calls or database calls. Whether you start from the left or you start from the right, in the end, you've got kind of a type system with a set of declarations that tell how each of the subgraphs is actually built and populated. And then you actually assemble these uh, subgraphs together into a supergraph by taking the data in one subsystem and pushing it to a query or mutation or the other. So in this case, let's say that there's a customer subgraph. And for this case, let's say it's built out of REST API, though it doesn't really matter. And you've got an order subgraph. You take the data, you extend the type customer with a new field called orders. And, and you say that, look, the way to materialize the data and orders is actually to, to take the ID field in a customer and pass it as a customer ID field in the query and orders. And that's how the data actually gets materialized. Now, of course, you can do a series of transformations on your way from one subsystem to the other. But in effect, the, the supergraph is being assembled by declaratively connecting the query on one side with the data on the other. So now let's go in and, and uh, show you how this is built. I've built out an e-commerce endpoint. And, and let's say that this, this e-commerce endpoint uh, uh, it, uh, takes data and, and returns customer information, the order information, the delivery information. It's actually making a call to a REST endpoint, a MySQL endpoint, live calls to DHL and UPS, and a live call to weather. Okay, so this is this is an uh, endpoint that runs on StepZen in anand.stepzen.net. And now let's go and build some part of it uh, and, and show you how it is actually assembled. And I'm only going to build the customer and order uh, sub part of it, okay? So let's go. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the kind of the customer sub uh, data. And this is a REST call that generates customer data. So there is, a, there is some uh, uh, REST endpoint that we're running and it returns the data for a particular customer in some JSON structure. Okay, so what we do is we take that exact same REST call and we import it into StepZen. And now you have uh, uh, the customer subgraph available to you. It's got all the sets of customer data. We, we do the automatic type detection. And now there's a REST call that connects that uh, backend uh, into that particular type system. Now let's deploy this onto uh, StepZen. Uh, StepZen start, it's as simple as that. And it will just take, take all of that uh, artifacts that we have and actually deploy it. Those artifacts are all available in something called index.graphql. In this case, there's only one file and it gets deployed there. Now let's go and see what, what, what happens. Let's go in and run this. This is just a local proxy, but in the end, it's actually connecting to a, a, a backend which is running on unknown.stepzen.net. And this is kind of a basic demo build. And since we haven't brought in orders and all that, let's just go and, and run this particular query. And now you've got whatever fields that you want. You can, you can ask for extra fields. And, and now you've got a GraphQL endpoint on that REST. It's as simple as that one line generated the GraphQL endpoint. And it's now running as a service that you can actually query in and, and ask questions on. Now let's actually go and build, bring in MySQL. So we'll do the same thing, which is in this case, we'll do a StepZen import MySQL. We'll go in and introspect it. And it runs on, I remember all of these except the password. So that's why I've got kind of a helpful hint uh, 
copy it here and and obviously mm, you can do whatever is your is your right database and now you've got your mysql database that has come in and and it's got uh, we kind of introspected understand the types you understand the links linkages etc in this case very very simple and then we provide a set of helpful queries that use add db query and and kind of write select clauses etc cetera, etc cetera, on and mutations in order to kind of create that okay so now now uh, you, we are watching it and we have deployed both of them so now let's kind of reload it and now you've got not just the customer subgraph available to you but you've got the uh, order subgraph available to you also so let's go and issue for customer one what his or her career uh, carrier and and orders are and there are two orders and one order was is going to be shipped by dhl and another order is going to be uh, shipped by upi so now we have got these two subgraphs and now let's connect the dots okay so in order to kind of connect the dots uh, what i'll do is i'll create a new file okay and i'll put this code in that file okay and and so let me go and do this let me create a new file called customer order dot graphql okay and let me uh, put data in this and all i'm saying in this is that that now my customer has got this extra field called orders in order to get the orders you actually issue the query called get orders by customer id and you take the field id in customer and pass it as the argument customer id for that particular query okay and now let's just make sure that this particular file is added to the manifest file so that steps in not only deploys each of the subgraphs but uh, deploys the connective tissue too and okay so now I, I i save all these files i've saved my new connective tissue file and my manifest file and we are watching it and uh, and it automatically will get get deployed and now let's kind of come and reload it and so now you'll see that not only can you issue the queries against two subgraphs but now orders is available in the context of the customer and therefore now you can ask for orders in the context of the customer and now you've got all the data that you could do by two queries now available in one query so we brought two subgraphs together by simple import statements and we connected them together and it's all running as a service on uh, anand.stepzen.net okay so if you like what you saw then uh, go and sign up and and give us a try it is really incredibly easy to build a graphql endpoint using this model of of a graphograph thank you very much